Okay, so um, I think with, with the exception of Jamil, we've, we've kind of outlined a few international, regional, and um, domestic power structures which we believe um, were, were part and parcel of the, uh, part and parcel of the um, um, antagonism between society and, and, and states and regional um, order um, prior to the revolutions and, and, and the social uprisings that occurred. Uh, but we also met, we also started to talk about the um, relationship between state and resistance um, represented in the case of Hezbollah. So I'll I'll, I'll go back again to um, my my uh, my cases again, uh, particularly to Niger and Egypt, um, and I'll just make a few remarks on the strategies of resistance. But obviously, in this case, um, by resistance, I'm referring particularly to social resistance, social struggle against the power structures that existed in. Um, these authoritarian regimes. Um, I think the first remark that I would like to make, um, which is again um, a critique of how we've seen things, um, is that the the revolutions in Tunisia, the revolutions in Egypt, and the and the uprisings elsewhere in the region at the moment, including um, the the two-year-old Iranian uprising, they are well they are rooted in a long history of social struggle. They are not as unprecedented as we often um, refer to them. Um, in the case of Tunisia, as soon as the events of Sidi Bouzid occurred, we, we, we talked of them as an unprecedented event. I would argue against this. I would argue that they are um, founded and, and, and rooted in um, social struggles that have occurred for decades. Um, on this, on this um, ground, I would like to then raise a question. Um, why did these resistance movements, why did this social struggle culminate in the um, overthrow of the Ben Ali regime in Tunisia, the Mubarak regime, and the um, unprecedented challenge to the Gaddafi regime um, or, the, uh, or any other regional regime today? Um, I think I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to make a slight distinction between um, Egypt and Tunisia here. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to discuss the, uh, the extent to which social struggle in these countries was grassroots, was organic, and hence capable of producing certain change. And my final point would be, to what exchange um, have these revolutions actually produced change, or what kind of change should we anticipate um, in the future? To what extent will they really change um, the state of affairs, economic, political, um, and in terms of power structures? So I think the two key words that I've been um, toying with in my um, you know, writings and, and studies of, of the um, uprisings recently are the words organic and grassroots. To what extent are these uprisings organic, which would touch upon what Payman was talking about, the social structures, the class structures, and the political economy within um, these societies? Um, I'll, 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 I'll make a comparison, a brief comparison between Tunisia and Egypt, and I'll try to draw some uh, conclusions um, regarding the extent to which these movements were grassroots or organic. Tunisia um, started off with an individual incident in what I would call the margin of the margin, the, um, in terms of political economy, the community from which um, um, the um, Boazizi came from, was on the social periphery or the margins of society, but also geographically, Sidi Bouzid is one of the um, least developed, or it's it's part of what was known as the Al Hadd al Manjami, or the, um, the 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 inner part of Tunisia, the uh, the mining core of Tunisia. Um, it started there, and it then fueled the dissent amongst other social classes, um, portraying the interconnectedness between. Um, interest groups between civil society, between um, neighborhood communities, between, um, um, I mean, for instance, so, so one of the key players in, in, in the um, expansion of the Tunisian revolution was the Tahad al the, the um, how do you translate that into English? The, 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 well, basically the labor movements in general. Um, whereas in Egypt, it started in a very different, in a very different fashion. Um, as many Egyptians joke about their own revolution, it was the very first preset or pre, you know preset revolution. The date was set in advance, two weeks in advance. It was set on Facebook. It did not start um, spontaneously. It did not occur on the 
uh, peripheries of the peripheries. On the contrary, it started in downtown Cairo, um, or the peripheries of downtown Cairo. It did not start in the margins of society, nor did it start in the peripheries, geographical and, and, and social peripheries. Nevertheless, even in Egypt, there was an extent, there was a degree of organic um, structure to the revolution, which managed to, within three days, transfer the revolution or, or the uprising from a 20 to 30,000 person uprising of, of activists and, and, and upper middle class um, uh, protesters on the 25th of January into a mass movement by the 28th of January and by the 27th of January it had already reached Suez, Mahalla, Alexandria and other parts of the country. So despite the fact that it did not start as, as spontaneous or as um, um, or on the peripheries of, of society, as it did in Tunisia, it managed. It, it had certain instruments by virtue of which it managed to penetrate class differences, geographical differences, um, and proved to be relatively organic um, and capable of overthrowing the regime. Um, I mean, once again, if if we think about the 25th of January versus the 8th of February or the 10th of February, immediately before the uh, before Mubarak stepped down, <coughs> numbers. Uh, are probably indicative. From 20,000 people in Tahrir Square on the um, 25th, 26th of January, we're talking about 4 to 5 million people. Um, and again, that's just Cairo, there was Suez, there were other parts. So, but what were the, um, what were the strategies or, or the instruments by which these, these movements gained a certain degree of momentum and were um, organic? Um, I'll, I'll, I don't want to take too much time, so I'll, I'll, I'll make just a few um, references to Egypt in the last five to six years. Once again, which brings me to the power structures, the total absence of the state on, on, on a very um, spatial um, dimension, perhaps. The very absence of the state, with the exception of its repressive apparatus, but in terms of developmental projects, in terms of urban planning, in terms of um, cultural, uh, in terms of presence on the cultural sphere, the state had, with, had withdrawn from Cairo. The state had concentrated its presence on the, uh, within the gated communities on the peripheries of Cairo and had left the city um, un without any government presence in terms of infrastructural um, developments, in terms of economic uh, prosperity, in terms of even uh, participation in um, in, in the cultural life and the urban life of a city like Cairo. We've had a number of studies on informal settlements in Cairo versus gated communities outside. The provision of infrastructure, the provision of um, security even, um, and, and the, the, the presence of the state in, 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 in various forms. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll leave it at this, but before I do, I'll just make a very um, brief comment when it comes to, you know, regarding the um, organic nature of the movement. Within, since the 2000, since the 21st of March 2003, the, um, probably the first million person protest in Cairo, which, um, whether it was million or not, that's questionable, but which was actually targeted at the beginning or called for in protest of the Iraqi invasion, downtown Cairo has become, which, which now is well known to all of us as Tahrir Square, but the entire area that was called Tahrir Square during the revolution had become a constant um, place of protests, a pedestrian place with cafes um, where bloggers uh, um, existed, where, where, where bloggers were based for, for the past few years, um, and, and, and a number of social movements existed there for years. The same downtown Cairo, because of the absence of the state, had become a, social, um, a hub for the presence of the urban poor, which perhaps is hard for us to comprehend sometimes in Europe because we normally think of poverty belts on the peripheries of the city. In Cairo it was within the city, um, rather in the city centers, with um, um, rather than poverty belts, maybe <coughs> rich belts surrounding the city. <coughs> but now that we have a number of um, regimes in the Middle East overthrown by what are relatively organic movements. Other regimes are being challenged, other uprisings are uh, continuing, other uprisings might have been defeated. But to what extent have these uprisings, namely Tunisia and Egypt, to what extent will they actually produce change? To what extent will they act, and, and what will they change? No, no doubt they have changed presidents, they have changed regimes, they have banned political parties, 
Um, they overthrew um, entire security apparatuses known to be the most, perhaps the two most notorious in the Middle East. Um, Tunisia being the most censoring of, of, of public freedoms, Egypt the most connected with international um, security apparatuses, um, and, and, and one, of the best, one of the best funded, not to mention one of the most um, numerous. We, we had more than 1.75 million members of, of Al Amn al Markazi, um, central security, the anti riot police. Um, but to what extent will they actually change? the structures of power, the understanding of authority? To what extent will they produce new modes of production, new relationships between classes and institutions of, of, of state and society? Once again, this brings us to um, what Paymal was talking about, the historical block. Revolutions and, and, and states produce new historical blocks. Will the Tunisian revolution and will the Egyptian revolution challenge the existing or what existed, the historical block that existed and produce new historical blocks? One, one example that I will use here to problematize this assumption is the very prominent role that the labor movement in Egypt played in the success of the revolution um, two months ago. Um, it, is very under, it, it is very badly reported, the fact that the, la the um, labor unions in Egypt, both official labor unions, official syndicates, as well as um, shadow syndicates or parallel syndicates, they all um, went on strike. They all um, launched a, a, a nationwide strike two days before Mubarak's resignation. Why do I think this is significant? I think this is significant because it, 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 it conveyed a very important message in my opinion. It conveyed a, a very important message that the protest was not X amount of people, even if it was in the millions in Tahrir Square. It was no longer capable of the army itself was no longer capable of containing it. It had spread to the household, it had spread to the factories. And we're talking about a society where um, a very large portion of the, uh, of, of the community, despite privatization and despite new liberal structural adjustments, a very large portion of the society still continues to um, um, enjoy a labor status of, of, of one for, of form of a, or another, including the fallahin, the peasantry, um, so to speak. Despite this very important role, will the middle classes, which um, will the middle classes who actually perhaps launched this revolution by presetting a date, advertising it on Facebook, advertising it on Twitter, which is um, we, we can we can argue back and forth as much as we want, but I will continue to argue is a very middle class phenomenon, um, especially in Egypt. Will this middle class understand the important role that the labor movement has played? Will this labor, uh, will this middle class understand the very important role that um, the industrial cities like Suez, Mahal al Kubra, um, and, and others have played in the success of the revolution? Will the Tunisian middle class understand the importance of Al Haud al Manjami and, and, and small um, and mining and industrial towns like Sidi Bouzid have played in sparking the revolutions in Egypt and Tunisia? I have doubts, and, and time will prove. But whether or not the historical block will change um, is something I think that we might um, take a lot of interest in in the future and will determine to what extent change will actually be materialized and, to, and, and, and in what sectors will change be materialized. Um, I think I'll leave it at this and we can just have more discussion later. Thank you.